Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. I am the Crypto Game Snob, and in today's video, we are taking a look at a top mythic rated, mythic ranked deck in nature. Uh, this is a big beasts nature deck with a very impressive 95% win ratio by its creator, 73% win ratio overall. I have been playing this deck for the last half a dozen matches or so. I've won five, I've lost one, and it was close. This deck is working out very well. Let's take a look and then we will jump into some games. Kicking things off with Chiron, the teacher. This is your shield bearer with a nice advantage of, of also doing minus one uh, durability to your opponent's relic, which can be very good for clearing out those one durability relics like a, like a Necroceptor, or even taking down your Enduring Shield, a, a notch on your, on your war decks. Uh, a couple of Marsh Walkers, very nice. One for regen. Creatures, the Black Jags, very good go-to standard nature, good stuff. Canopy Parage, very nice board control. Uh, Fae Flame Blades times two. These are excellent for early game board control, late game frenzy triggering. They're just an awesome, awesome card. Fae Flame Blade. Finny and Fruitbearer, one of the best cards in the game right now. And uh, that is also included in this deck. Spits out a Vibrant Fruit, which is the destroyer of worlds. He is the most powerful creature that you can possibly hope to recruit to your team, the 1-1 one, one Vibrant Fruit. If you don't believe me, just try him. We've got a couple of Gloam Druids for their plus two strength to all confused creatures, and confused creatures include a lot of creatures in this deck, pretty much all of them really. Uh, we have a couple of underbrush boars just because that initial alpha strike, you're, you're, you get to make your attack on, your, on the turn that you drop this creature. And also, if he survives, well, then you've got a creature on board. Very good for, for taking control of the board. Underbrush Boar, one of my favorite nature cards. A couple of lightning strikes, just for keeping the board clear, taking out big creatures. And here we have the Revenant Lynx. Now, very often times, I find myself dropping this down just in the right time, just when I needed it to then, oh, recharge that two mana and drop down either a Gloam Druid or an Underbrush Boar or a Finian Fruit Bearer. Uh, you can make some very big plays, very wide plays with the Revenant Lynx. It works out very well. Bladefly also goes very nicely with something like Wildfire, Overgrown Rhino, just a very solid 4 mana, 5-5 five, five stat creature, and Wildfire, of course, super powerful. Deal 1 damage to each of your opponent's creatures and give 1-1 one, one, plus 1 regen to your wild creatures. That 1 regen can add a lot of value. If you've got quite a few creatures on the board, it can be very difficult to catch up with that plus 1 regen on, oh, say, 3 creatures or something like that. Brazen Moose, 6-6-5 six, six, mana creature with Blessed. Uh, this card is self-explanatory, just a strong early game. Well, early, just before the middle game, just a, a very strong before the middle game card, 6-6, six, six, Blessed Confused. Uh, the only time I lost a game was when my opponent stole two of these. Uh, I was playing a deck steal Deception, and they stole two of these right out from my hand, and that was that was the only time I lost with this deck. Uh, the Giant Pangolin, super strong, awesome, Blitz, Confused, Armor 2, awesome card. Sudden Bloom, one of my favorite cards in the game. This only has one in the deck, and actually this has not come up a single time in all of my games so far. Um, I don't know, it might be an idea to swap out uh, maybe maybe a Chiron for a second Wild Bloom, so this is more likely to come up. Or maybe a Wild... Maybe? I'm not sure. But this just never came up for me even once. And it is such a strong game-finishing card. It might be an interesting idea to maybe grab two of those. Uh, just because of that 5-5 five, five and overkill and twin strike. Are you kidding me? When you're when you're frenzied, you get 5-5 five, five to a creature and overkill and twin strike. This card is absurd. I love this card. It's one of my favorite cards in the game. And two Wild Hogs. Because you can win an entire war with just two pigs or so sometimes is the case if you buff up that pig which this deck cannot do but i'm just saying i'm a big fan of the wild hogs let's jump into the games okay kicking things off here animal bond because well of all the god nature powers animal bond seems the least bad at the moment uh just mulliganing away some of my higher mana creatures here so i'll have something early to play this is a very very aggressive nature deck. We like to get a lot of stuff on the board fast and start doing damage. Control the board. Going second here up against a zombie death type deck. Oh, anyway. Kicking things off, kicking things off. Now that summons a 3 2 experimental outcome. Experimental outcome when it dies, so I'm not going to be in a hurry 
to take that card out necessarily. I'll maybe like make him trade into me at the same time. I don't want to put an underbrush or on the table because again, triggering that afterlife. Uh, it's not a great way to get momentum early on. He drops down the uh, Voracious Fiend, which is a 2-2 leech creature, which summons a 1-1 leech zombie. Nice little healing and decent stat card for two uh, mana. At this point, I'm thinking of triggering my Finian Fruit Bearer for lack of much of a hugely better option. I could play Flame Blade and take out his Advocate, but then it would just summon something else in its place. So I kind of decide to throw the cat out, see where it goes, and at this point, my options are uh, kind of narrowed down a little bit. So I'm gonna make the uh, nether, uh, nether, nether spawns. I forget what. That, never that. that you. I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to make words, but I sound a little bit like a dip it up, dip it up, dip. That's all. That's all, folks. But anyway, uh, that Fey flame blade, great for early board control. Um, at this point, I'm thinking if I were him, I'd probably trade into my jag and possibly, possibly get the, the uh, get the experimental outcome on on the table. Try to clear off my kitty cat but he has other plans in mind, or maybe he doesn't, because the Faithful and Blade did put Confused on that, uh, oh, I forget the name, Advocate? I forget the name. Outnumber the Living is cool. This gives him a zombie for every creature that I have on the board, actually two if he's frenzied, but since I only have one creature on the board, he doesn't get a huge amount of value out of that. And so I'm thinking he did intend to trigger the frenzy and hopefully, and was hoping to get some zombies out of that. Uh, but the Faithful and Blade, just so great, at zombie death board control early game. That Finian Fruit Bearer, absolutely lovely card to have on the board when Frenzy is triggered. I could also now pip into an underbrush boar, and I was thinking about that, but decided uh, decided against it. It doesn't do me a huge amount of advantage to take out that advocate, which is a weak creature at the moment. Can't do a whole heck of a lot until he pops it and gets that afterlife experimental outcome and I kind of want to force him to waste his turn on that not give him that creature to trade my Finian fruit bearer away with or so was my thinking at the time okay just gonna fast forward here because there was a bit of thinking process that went on he summons up the mass rays of some zombies get some zombies on the board now that Revenant Lynx is in my hand with some good two mana creatures also available. So I'm doing a little bit of math of my own here. So what I'm looking at in my hand is a Revenant Lynx and an Underbrush Boar and a Gloam Druid and all of these things can actually be played this turn for an absolutely ridiculous oh, turn four basically a very game swinging very game uh, board controlling turn four so uh yeah this is where you'll see just how powerful that revenant links can be especially combined with gloam druid so anyway we're taking out a few few of his creatures here just to take some of the stuff off the board whatever i can get out of the way and then uh yeah underbrush boar goes down we pip into a revenant links pip Pip into a Revenant Lynx, refresh that two mana. Now we have so many wild or confused creatures rather on the board. Gloom Druid goes down, creating an immensely scary uh, board of just these massive creatures. Massively scary, hugely scary. Um, what do you even do about that? This is turn four, and I've got a, a this this deck can get quite ridiculous. And I think my opponent agreed. Good game, Tomate, my friend. That was a tough situation, and <laughs> honestly, I probably would have done the same. All right, next up we are facing up against a light. I've got my little one, two badger pals ready to help out, queued up. Mulligan's about to uh, drop. Now I'm going to go on and get rid of my big six mana drops, even though I do love that pangolin. Lightning strike, yeah, probably not too useful early on. So I'm just trying to get some creatures that I can play, some good options here. I'm thinking, should I drop Chiron right away or should I just flip it to the next go? I'm thinking Light likes to play a lot of early game relics. Maybe I should hang on to my Chiron and take a little bit of durability out of one of Light's relics. So that's what I decide to go with. Uh, actually, it works out okay. He flips around the strength and the health of my creature. That's becoming a very popular card. What's it called again? I forget. I forget. Uh, anyway, at this point, Chiron is looking pretty good as a possible trade for my for my pig. 
And uh, I think I, I think that's what I try to do. No, I don't. I go straight for the guard. Why not? That's what I guess I did. Right, that's right, because Finian Fruit Bearer was in my hand. Here as I narrate, I'm only paying half attention. <laughs> Talking and thinking at the same time, man. It's a little bit harder. Anyway, lots of creatures on the board now. Finian Fruit Bearer and uh, Chiron the Teacher and uh, a nice, decent-sized Wild Hog, which he doesn't have a an, op an answer for, per se. Maybe something in his hand, but on the board, not so much. Decides to take out my Chiron the Teacher because sure, why not? That was a favorable trade. Uh, and this one, I actually don't think I've seen that one played all that much. The Exalted Hermit. Uh, he gives order to two of my creatures at this point. And I don't have a massive amount of options to play here, but I do have that Lightning Strike. And so either I could take out his, uh, his, his, what's it called again? Was that the Hermit? I can't remember. Um thinking here thinking here not entirely sure what i want to do with this next move because as you can see there's a lot of kind of meh options on the board not the best not the worst uh, i decide to buff up one of my creatures that way theoretically if he gets the next attack then it, at least my my one creature would be able to survive that of course i forget that they have order on them so it's kind of irrelevant anyway that being said not a lot of options to play in that particular turn but i've got some nice options coming up next nice big overgrown rhino his bigger buddy the uh, brazen moose now we get a Trial Spirit and get a little bit more health to his Armored 3-2 with one armor, making it a little bit more difficult to clear in theory. That being true, of course, if my Wild Hog decides not to hit him. Uh, he also drops down the uh, Blind Martyr, which will give everything on his board a nice 2 health buff when I am forced to take it out, which indeed I am forced to take it out. Uh, that being said, well, you know what, if I don't have a better option, a better trade, I might as well just hit him in the face, or at least try to, I totally miss. My confused creatures are being a little bit less than cooperative, which is unfortunately, but fairly often the case with a nature decks. Now he's getting a lot on the board here, but at the same time he doesn't have a huge amount of damage output either. So we got uh, one, two, and four on the board, I've also got four and five on the board. So there isn't a hugely good trade. That being said, Wildfire top decks, and that actually can turn my Overgrown Rhino into a trade for his 5-5 uh, five, five with one armor, of whom's name I forget. Decide to throw down my pig to get everything all buffed up, do a little bit of damage, and then it's time to uh, basically, hopefully, if my Rhino cooperates, run that into his 5-5 five, uh, five, uh, five, with, five, five with one armor. Also take out the, mostly the rest of his board, giving him not a whole heck of a lot to work with, and White does really struggle if it doesn't manage to get establish its early game board. If it starts to get behind, it has a really hard time because Life Light wants to establish a board and then buff that board up. And if Nature or any other deck uh, prevents Light from doing that, Light has a very hard time recovering. Um, the Guild Enforcer. Uh, is actually just at the right amount of health to be taken out by my uh, by my overgrown buffed rhino. Uh, I decide to maybe clear his board if my pig cooperates, and at this point, well, five is a little bit too much damage to to take out a little trial spirit with, so I don't bother <clears throat> with that. Throw a big old moose on the board and uh, knock out a little bit of his favor. At this point, my board is looking very big, very scary. Uh, very difficult for light to recover when there's quite a... I mean, both of my pigs have regen. You know, so the Impetuous Fight is a good option. Takes out my big moose. Gives him at least a, a small amount of, of, of kickback. Although, I still do have board dominance here. And I'm looking at my hand and I'm thinking a 3 and a 2 and a 3. I like my combos here. Everything's looking really good for my next uh, Revenant Lynx play. And my opponent, I think, uh, agreed though that the... <laughs> The board was kind of stacked against him in that case, so... Okay, next up we are going up against an aggro war deck. This is also a top-ranked deck that I'll actually be doing a video on pretty soon. So we have a top-ranked nature deck here and a top-ranked war deck. Going head-to-head. -head. See how this see how this unfolds. This one actually is a bit of a longer match. This is our longest match by quite a margin. 
Um, yeah, okay. Turn, I get uh, turn two, he gets turn one. I've got a couple of wild hogs in my hand. Not a bad place to start. Now I'm thinking, should I Fae Flame Blade away his, his Axie Girl, or should I just drop a bunch of bodies on the board? A bunch of bodies sounds good to me. A bunch of bodies on the board. Seems like a, seems like a good, good option at the particular time. Anyway, um, that being said, the Tavern Brawler uh, gets thrown down. And uh, we get uh, Deadly Arsenal, which gives him a nice bit of early game board swing favor. Now he's got 4-2 on the board and 2-2 two, two as well to my little pig, who could potentially take out his Axie Girl. Um, I've got that Gloom Druid in my hand. That doesn't do me too much good at this point. I've also got Chiron the Teacher, Fae Flame Blade. I have to eat a decent amount of damage if my pig goes to the wrong place, which indeed he does. That's an unfortunate thing, like I say, about them confused creatures, but hey, maybe I can make one of his creatures confused too and maybe, maybe get something out of that. I decide to clear some of his bodies off the board, even though I have to eat for damage to do so. I don't want him building up his board too much, getting too far ahead in that regard. Uh, we have the Knock V Pillager. Coming down next, 3-3 three, three with Life Leech and uh, and Twin Strike. Now hopefully my boar will cooperate and I can take out that Tavern Brawler. And he does indeed. I'm um, looking at my Underbrush boar and I'm thinking I can buff that up with Chiron, the Teacher. I'm not sure if I want to use Chiron because I might want to use that to remove his Relic. But I also like to get the Favorable Trade out of that and I decide to go for the Favorable Trade. It is definitely a whole, the whole thing is that early game board, board control. He answers up with a nice blitzy viking longship, which definitely does the trick. Uh, blade flies are good. The gloam druid in hand is also good. It would have been nice if that underbrush boar cooperated, but he did not, unfortunately. Throw down some blade flies, fill up the board with bodies. Never a bad thing. If there's any chance I can uh, get that gloam druid off next. Unfortunately not. The Orcish Elite, which recently got a buff and now, in my humble opinion, is one of War's most powerful cards. That Twin Strike Blitz uh, is just so, so strong. So he's got a couple of decent cards on the board. I'm eyeing up my Wildfire at this point, thinking, hmm, what can I do with this? I'm sure I can do something with this. Uh, anyway, that would take everything down to uh, Bladefly Range. I'm hoping to keep some of my creatures on the board, if at all possible, because they're nice and big and buff at this point. Worst case scenario, I guess I can lose two of them, uh, but, uh, you know, Gloam Druid is also a, a pippable option. Now i got 15 damage on the board, and what I'm hoping to do is maybe lose one of my blade flies and, uh, and basically just hit him in the face for as much damage as I can. And I lose one of my blade flies, not a bad trade, you know, not the best, but not bad, certainly nothing wrong with it. Grab that Rune of Fire, because that's always a good thing to have in your hand. It's definitely something you don't want in your opponent's hand. That three damage can be very game swinging. That Rune of Fire has, has won or lost more than one game for me. Another Orcish Elite. Man, these things are just so powerful on the board. <clears throat> Blitz, Twin Strike, and enough health to basically carry out uh, a twin strike and oftentimes even survive not in this case but oftentimes even survive things are looking a heck of a lot better for me at this point revenant lynx goes down and i decide just to throw a rune of fire in his face as well because why not i could probably save this for clearing something off the board maybe i should have um at the same time and you never know when you will need, you know, I had two extra mana to spare there. Who knows what I'm going to get next. And uh, I thought, oh, well, it's just, we'll get the damage in while we have the opportunity to get the damage in. That was my thinking, because you never know if that might switch around in the future. And uh, War doesn't have a, well, I guess War does have some healing options, but he's going to use it regardless of whether or not I throw down that Rune of Fire. Anyway, we have a giant pangolin now on the board, but he's got two protected creatures. Each of those protected creatures has the capability of taking out one of my confused creatures. So this is kind of a tough spot. Uh, I'm thinking I should pop one of his bubbles. <clears throat> I'm also thinking to try to knock out you know, one of his creatures. Or maybe I was thinking to pop another one of his bubbles. That's what I was thinking. 
Unfortunately, uh, my confused creatures kind of really go bad. They will go about as bad as they can go. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, anyway, still a decent amount of creatures on the board. Um, I do bop, I do bop, I do. Things are looking good. Things are looking good at this point. Yes, they are. When your opponent starts throwing down bodies from the sanctuary, you know they're kind of desperate for some better option to play. That is certainly the case for me whenever that happens. Um, that being said, buffing up the, the, the relic removal bronze servant to a 4 or 5 is decent. Not decent enough to deal with the pangolin, but, you know, again, those confused creatures were, were really the, the kind of bane of me in this particular game. I kept trying to finish the game, and those confused creatures, they kept doing their own damn thing. Um, so I'm thinking, I got nothing in my hand, I might as well try to draw another card. Canopy Barrage is not bad, u often useful. And, uh, yeah, it's look, I mean, it's looking good at this point, right? It's definitely, definitely looking good. Uh, then, of course, he drops Hector. Oh, man, he drops Hector. Hector with Leech and Protected and Twin Strike. And that uh, wipes out a good deal of my board, healing him up to 10, leaving me with only these piddly little 1-1 one -one creatures on the board. That being said, Canopy Barrage does come in useful. Um, and I am able to get some damage through, drop down a Finian Fruit Bearer as well. I mean, we're definitely pressing him here. I'm, I'm eyeing up the Ranger Shortbow at this point, thinking maybe, maybe not. On the other hand, I don't want him to get something more useful than, uh, than a, you know, Ranger Shortbow, whatever the case may be. He drops down that, uh, Shimmera, the Twin Strike, what is that one? Ravenous Shimmera, Blessed. With uh, twin, was that twin strike? No, just blessed with blitz and leech, is what that was. Uh, and I've got a lot of creatures on the board at this point, but I don't have a lot of damage on the board. Those little one ones, and they're all confused. So I mean, a lot of them have the chance to go into his ravenous shimmera, and our, our health are actually our health is actually pretty close at this point. Ten on his side, nine on my side. I feel like I, I definitely still have the the board advantage, but. There goes that ranger first bow, which I was eyeing up earlier. Maybe I should have grabbed it. Decided against it. Um, Fae Flame Blade is not a good option at this point. So basically I'm stuck with working what, with what I have on the board, which is not a lot. Uh, best case scenario, I need to trade two creatures into one of his. And one of them gives him healing and we're so close in health that this is just not amazing. Those confused creatures. So problematic. There we go. Another one. Um, heals him up even more. Now he gets the healing advantage. Um, at least that badger did what he was supposed to do. You know, he hit the guy he was supposed to hit. Faith Flame Blade, because, you know, trigger frenzy and that sort of thing, never a bad thing to have in your hand. Um, and uh, I get, my, the cards were kind of sticking, kind of over popping up and over. That's why you see me wiggling my mouse around every now and then, trying to get the, the overlay unstuck here and there. Um, so yeah, lots of little badgers on the board at this point. He gets the Trojan Battle Mage, the Enduring Shield, and the Slayer. Oh yeah, he can just whittle away doing two damage. I have to be very, very aggressive, press him very hard at this point to try to, well, get enough damage through. That being said, those confused creatures just did not want to do what I wanted them to do for pretty much this whole match. Um, yeah, that, that being said, we got some damage through at least. Throw down another little badger, another marsh walker. Things are looking better. At this point, things are actually looking decently good. We have three, four, five, six, seven damage on the board. Uh, if Slayer, he uses Slayer all the way up to eight mana at this point, which is a really late game. Archangel Bruiser comes down. That's a problematic card. So he. He uh, hits my hits my front line to give his Angel Bruiser protected, and then overkills some of my creatures. And then at this point, it uh, almost comes down to a coin flip. Not quite though, because he has just enough mana to draw that Rune of Strength two two, and front line to his creature, making it a seven five. And at this point, I'm thinking all those confused creatures really done me wrong. But I top deck a Lightning Strike, 
and that is the game. That was about as close as it comes. Good game, Hanel34. Well done, mate. And uh, yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. See you in the next one.